This is good. I, I just got off a of red eye to get here. I didn't think I could be here today, and I managed to, to make it, so this is, this is good. Uh, <laughs> Don't you just hate when somebody says, yeah, I talk to her, or I'm talking to her. Deepfakes have been around a few years now, but now with the boon of AI, the advancement has been insane. Now, with face fusion, you can make any of the same types of videos using anyone's likeness and by only using one image. Whereas it used to take an hour or more of video of a single person to be trained upon to learn that face in order to use it in another video, it can now all be done in minutes with great quality. And now you can do it with any video. I would have used something more exciting here, but dealing with copyright isn't fun on YouTube. As it is, I'm still not sure how they'll feel about Apple's keynotes. Now the one main problem with so much of AI out there is that either you have to pay a lot for it, and then it tends to be censored like crazy, or it's more open source and then you have to deal with non-intuitive, complicated installations and user interfaces. In this case, we will be dealing with the latter, but that's not why this video exists. And I am terrible with these types of installs, but that's the point. By the end of this video, you will see a successful install and use of Face Fusion, and it will include all of the complications that I come across and what I do to fix or get around them. I already had the previous version 1.31 installed, but I completely deleted it and will be showing a new install with this video. Since this is a completely new install, I'm gonna attempt to actually just go by the instructions that are on their website. Although in the past with uh, version 131, as much as I tried to follow the steps, it seems like I had to do a bunch of other things that were just not even there including the core ML didn't even exist unless I did some other steps. So but this is going to be the new version 2.0 that I'm, as I said, I am doing as a completely new install and we're going to see if maybe it just works perfectly this time. And definitely I am not somebody that is professional or proficient at all using terminal. Everything I ever do in it is basically just copy pasting from what other people do and show me how to do. I don't understand it, so hopefully this works. And for those of you that also don't really understand it, we'll be able to follow the step by step and be able to get it installed and have it working the same. So first, let's open up the website, which I believe I have it already here. So it's docs.facefusion.io slash installation in order to go directly to the installation setup. And for me, I will be following the Mac OS instructions since I am on Mac OS. Otherwise, anybody else go ahead and do the other things. So I'll click on Mac OS. And it's pretty simple. Each of these codes, you just either can drag and select or instead just hit this little copy button at the end here, copy that and I'll go to your clipboard and then you need to open up terminal. So once you have terminal open, make that a bit bigger. First thing I do is just paste in exactly what it said to do. Some of these things I might already have installed, so I might not even need to do any of it. It does say it's already installed. It's just asking if I want to reinstall it. So no, I don't need to do that. So let's see the next step. But otherwise, you would be getting a whole installation. I don't know how long it would take. Five minutes maybe to install all of Python. But you'll see what happens if you do. You just sit and wait until you get your basic little thing here that says your user ID and the computer name. So let's see the next one, copy that, and same thing, paste, enter. Okay, environment's already satisfied, so again, not doing anything else. And let's reinstall git, paste that. Already installed. Again, if you don't have these, it'll start installing them for you and you just have to wait whatever a lot of time it takes and that's it. And the important one, the FFmpeg. 
which I'm sure I have this one too, but just in case. Yep, yeah, you definitely want to make sure you have the newest version of FFmpeg when doing this, otherwise you'll there's definitely a lot of problems that you can run into. Alright, so now that we got those four done, go back out to here. And here's where you want to clone the repository. So copy this one, and this is where it should actually just copy the repository from GitHub and put it onto your computer. And as you can see, this one actually, yes, is downloading and apparently already copied over. So really at that point, that's all there is to the installation itself, but then you actually need to run it. So first thing you need to do is set up the environment that it runs and you need to actually have it running in a virtual environment. So we will copy this. Although I'm pretty sure it didn't say it yet, but, and I don't think it says it in the instructions, we actually do need to change the directory. But I believe this part's fine if you don't do that yet. But just in case, we'll follow this first and see how it goes. So we'll paste that in there, enter. Does a couple little things that it doesn't show you. Come back here, copy this. And this will actually start the virtual environment. You can see now it says VNV before base. So that lets you know that you're actually in the virtual environment. And that's all for that page. So let's go back again. Here's where we'll install the dependencies, which apparently is Python, but, oh, it's actually the install it's the dependencies that are well let's find out let's just see what this does yeah i'm not sure that gave an error so that i believe is where we're supposed to change the directory because yeah that's not doing anything so cd for change directory and the directory is just face fusion and now you can see here for those that don't know terminal at all you now see that you're in the face fusion directory. So let's try that again with the Python install. I don't know why I'm typing it, but for some reason I am when I could just pasted it. Yeah, see now it's doing something, but instead it's saying no module named inquirer. Fun. Okay, I'm actually going to try something that work before first because i'm in the face fusion directory i'm going to list the files that are in there so ls for list and it should just list what's in there and then see the requirements.txt i think this will actually do what i think it's supposed to do but let's try this again i'm not good at all with using terminal but let's see what happens so again with the python and again i'm typing it for some reason install.py but then I believe the two and then requirements.txt nope I was wrong still no so as if we actually needed more proof that I have no idea what I'm doing in terminal, uh, those last two things really made no sense for me to try. I mean, what I typed abs made absolutely no sense. So actually, this is what I meant to try. pip install slash dash r requirements dot txt. Did I spell that right? Yeah, sure, why not? There we go. That's what it was. Getting a bunch of errors, so I don't know what that means. No, oh, I don't know. Whatever. Let's uh, see what that did anyway and try this again, see if it works. 
Nope. <laughs> awesome. Okay, again, see if I can install the Inquirer. Not sure if this is going to do anything, but pip install Inquirer. Okay, so supposedly it's in already satisfied, so that's not helping. So I am going to quit terminal to get, I don't know how to get out of a virtual environment regularly. So I'm going to quit this terminal and then I'm going to open up terminal again. So back to starting up the virtual environment. Gosh, I wish I remember what to type for that. Put these back in. All right, back into a virtual environment. And then should be able to do this now, but let's see. Oh, the change directory. Oh, still getting the inquirer issue. All right, so I screwed up and I didn't actually record the part where I figured out the problem, but I guess it is the virtual environment that was the issue, so you have to actually deactivate it, and I guess quitting terminal does not deactivate the virtual environment. So what I actually, you can see here what I did, you actually type in right here, deactivate when you're in there. That deactivates it. You can see it puts you back to base instead of VENV -E base. Then once you've done that, type in the same thing again. Python 3.10. Yeah, I'm not going to say it all. But anyway, you do these two things again as you, as you had before to start up the virtual environment. At that point, I tried the Python install.py, which is to install the dependencies and sure enough it actually worked this time at that point you select the variant of torch to install uh, i believe it's actually up and down or whatever you because i am using a mac i will be using the default uh, i believe cuda is what you want if you're able to uh, run nvidia at all but on a mac obviously that's not a possibility so choose default Enter, and let's see, select the variant of Onyx to run install. This, I want Core ML Silicon since I am on an M1. If you're, for some reason, running this on Intel, you will pick that. Otherwise, CUDA, again, for NVIDIA people. But again, I will pick the Core ML Silicon. It looks like it's done. Of course, depending on what you already had installed or did not have installed, it might have taken longer or shorter, who knows. Let's see what's next. So I will not be setting up the acceleration since CUDA is not available to us or to me on Mac. I believe the dependencies kind of already did that, but I don't know. So according to this, that's all that needs to be done. Just type in Python run.py and hopefully it works. I think there might be more install at this point, but let's see. Yep, more install. Yeah, this definitely takes quite a bit more time. Of course, my connection for the most part kind of sucks limited by a very old modem I need to upgrade that all right and here we go you can see here running on local URL you got this address right here you always want to copy that and then all you got to do is open up a browser and you can see I actually already have the open here and just enter and there we go as you can see here now, it's Face Fusion 2.0.0. Very nice. Okay, so now that we have it working, I'm going to do kind of a quick overview because this might look kind of 
daunting to those that have never used it before, but it's actually pretty simple. To start out so that you can actually see how it affects everything, I'm going to first bring in the video. And because I don't want to screw up with uh, copyright and all that stuff, I'm just going to bring in a little video I made using Moon Valley AI. And that's where you put it. I guess I should. Let me take that out first. So first you have the target. Right here, the target. That is the original video that you want to replace somebody in it with. So again, I will take a video and I will drop it there. You see, it's just a real simple video that's only three seconds long. Don't want to do something too long because otherwise it'll take forever to process when I'm just trying to show you how to do it. Then the other part is we need a picture. So let's see, who should we use? Let's try Christopher Walken. A young Christopher Walken. And just to start off with right here, they get the preview frame. And below that you can see trim frame and trim frame end, start, start and end. That's where you can choose which part of the video you want to actually completely render out. But this preview frame, that's just the part to show you which part of the video is going to show up in this preview above. So move that around, you can go to a different part of the video. And you can see it's definitely starting to look a little bit more like Christopher Walken there. That's, that didn't seem to change there, though. So what you can do here is see the reference face, which is referencing the preview. Click on that. And there, updated it so it looks more like Christopher Walken. I'm going to try somebody else other than Christopher Walken for this. Let's see. Let's bring in... Maybe a young Keanu. Yeah, there we go. And look at another frame. <laughs> that definitely looks like Keanu there. All right. So let's start from the beginning, actually, as far as what all the different things are. I'm not going to go through everything because a lot of it is new and was not in the older version that I've used. This is my first time literally looking at 2.0. So on the left side over here, the main thing is you're going to want to use the face swapper. The face swapper is just the basic thing that does the actual face swapping. Frame enhancer, personally, I would never touch. That is going to be something that upscales the video itself, the entire frame, every single frame. And you're adding minutes practically to each frame almost. Okay, maybe, maybe a minute to each frame. So when you're doing 25 frames per second, which is the standard for phase fusion, all of a sudden that's going to jump astronomically in your time. It's just not worth it. Face enhancer, on the other hand, literally just enhances the faces for each frame. And that includes faces that you're not actually swapping. So if you have multiple people in the picture, or I should say in the video, but you're only face swapping one of them, It'll also enhance the faces of the other people that are in there too. So it does definitely increase the time. So for instance, if I'm just doing the face swapper, say something took a total of a minute, if at the same time I am using the face enhancer, instead of the minute, it'll do another thing on top of that. It'll probably take eh, probably another 10 to 15 minutes. So it does take a lot longer to do to, when you add the face enhancer in. And just so you can see, when you do use that and you click on that, then it gives you a couple other options here. So you can choose which type of face enhancer model. I never change these though. I'm always using the GFP GAN 1.4. I don't know why you would ever pick 1.3 or 1.2. And I honestly don't know how good or bad the other ones. Although I do believe these two here might actually be better. I know these were added in the newest 2.0. But that's going to take some testing later. I'm not going to make any guesses at that right now then for the the blend with the enhancer i actually usually put this at about 50 it depends kind of actually for instance if you're using something that's the, if the original video that you're using is older or and has a lot of grain to it i would definitely turn it down put that around 50 or whatever otherwise Put it higher, probably the 80 that it's at, that it was at the default is probably pretty good. When you get up to 100, 
it starts to make things like rubbery and plastic. Like they just don't even look real anymore. But then again, if your original image kind of already looked that way, like it kind of does with the fact that these are AI generated video, maybe it would work better. So that's it for face enhancer as far as the different um, settings. Not much else to do. So I'm going to turn that off because it does kind of even slow the previews down when I have that turned on. So the next thing, this is, if you're on a Mac, do not ever start a face swap without turning Core ML on. Otherwise, you're talking 10 times the amount of time it's going to take to get anything done. So make sure that's on. You can leave the CPU on. Um, execution thread count. I have kind of made guesses at this. I, somebody will probably correct me and tell me I'm completely wrong. I on an M1 with 16 megs of RAM. M1 Mini, so it's nothing special. It does the job pretty well, but anyway, so with the execution thread count, I have always just put this to nine. I don't know if that's right. And then the execution queue count, I've put to four. Again, I'm just testing this out. I'm gonna see later, see which is actually faster, but that seems to work for me, and I'm sticking with that for now. Max memory, I just leave that at zero, so I believe that's it'll automatically use whatever the max amount available you have for it. Okay, under that is the temporary frame format. So what it does is when you're actually creating the face swap, it'll go through the video and it will actually make a frame out of every single like it'll excuse me, it'll make an image from every single frame of your video and it'll save those as individual images for the entire video onto your hard drive. So as individual images, and it's going to be putting those back to a video afterward, it's going to be combining it all. You want a high quality. It's up to you if you want to either choose JPEG or PNG. PNG is going to be higher quality, but it will take up space. I'm not even sure, honestly, how much space. Obviously, it depends on the original video size that you had. But JPEG has always seemed to be good enough for me. And then at that point, I just leave the the quality of it to 100. Could even probably put it down a little bit, and it won't matter. But I think that's fine. I've never noticed any issues from the original video to afterward, as far as too much compression or whatever. Again, that's where I leave it. Most of the defaults for this are fine. Output path that's for where the video will automatically be saved, but it's more of a temporary output i'll show you where you what you should actually be doing but that's also where the temporary frames will be put and again so it's a very random directory that's invisible normally so you'll have to know how to show the hidden files on a mac but anyway and then as far as the encoding i've always just left it at the the libx 264 i've tried some of the other ones i tried um the 265 and i got errors i tried one of the other I believe I tried this one to the other H.264 and I got an error. So I just said, screw it. It doesn't really matter. The quality is still great because you can choose the output video quality. Um, don't put it up to 100. There's not any point in going any higher at 80. You're not going to notice anything as far as compression. You can put it lower if you want, if you're starting to get large files. Okay, now the options here, I see they've, this has actually been moved from where it used to be. All right, so individually, let's look at this. The keep FPS, so frames per second, that will be depending upon what original video you have. Say you have a video that's in the format of 29 frames per second or 30 or whatever, it'll keep it in that. Sometimes the video might get messed up because it's not the default. It's not the standard of what Face Fusion uses, but you have the option. Just check it. Make sure it's going through correctly if you do have a different frame rate. Otherwise, if you don't select that, what it's going to do is anything that you have, if you have 2997 or 30 or 24 or whatever, if it will actually change the video to the, the default of Face Fusion, which is 25 frames per second. And then the next one, Keep Temp. That is if you want to keep the images and whatnot that are in the temporary folder that while you're creating this. Honestly, I don't see the reason for doing that, but that's up to you. Skip audio seems pretty obvious. I believe that just scrapes the audio out and does not put the audio back into the new video. And the skip download one, I honestly don't know what that does. I've read before what it does, but I can't remember. It didn't really make much sense to me. I just don't touch it. 
So then in the middle here, again, you have the source. That's the image that you want the person to look like afterward. Then you have the target. Again, that's the video, the original video that you want to change. And then the output will show here once you have done the actual change. And then when you're ready, hit start and all that. But let's go back over to the right here first. So I told you what the preview is. I told you what the preview frame is and you saw what it does. And then you can see here, if I went all the way to the end, it is 97 frames total. But then say I only wanted a few seconds of it. And again, knowing that it's 25 frames per second, that would mean if say I only wanted three seconds of it, I would only need 75 frames. So I can either cut this down to 75 here. You understand. So that it'll only show the first 75 frames of the 97 frames when it outputs it. The face selector mode, I've always used reference. I guess the many is the one and many. Those are new. I forget what it was before, but it said something before with the 131. Again, that's something I'm going to have to play around with. Um, in the reference face, that's going to be more for when, for some reason, as you saw, it did not select the face and didn't change it at all. So then you can select it. You just tap on it and then it should fix it and actually change the face. However, if you're using a video that has multiple people in the shot, there'll be a bunch of pictures of all the people in the shot here. And then that's when you can choose who you want your source image to change to, which pick, which person that happens to be in that shot or in the entire video. And it'll actually figure out, so that I say you have a three minute long video and that person's in it two minutes later, it'll also fix that person's image at that point too even if it's showing a bunch of other people that weren't in the shot to begin with. Now the reference face distance. Okay, this number has changed because it used to be the middle was uh, 1.5 and it went up to a 3. Now it looks like we got a 0 0.6 and that goes up to a 1.5. What that does is basically how close it needs to be to the picture you chose in the reference. So say you have five people that are in the image and you want it to be just that one person then usually the the middle, which is at 6.5 now, should work. However, if you want the image to take over multiple people, then you blast that thing all the way up. And then all five people will have the Keanu face or whatever face, even if it's a woman or whatever. But then sometimes, the depending on what the original source is, it will not pick it up as well. So you'll also have to turn up for that reason. You obviously don't want to go all the way up unless, of course, there's only the one person in the image or in the video. But then sometimes, even in the middle, it'll, if two people that are in the video look similar to each other, it might actually put that face on the two people. So you might have to turn it down so that hopefully it only will pick that one person. You can see I put it down to 0.5, and even then, at that point, now it's not even choosing this guy anymore to put Keanu on him. So if I go back up to 6.5 then it's working. Okay, now face mask blur, that's new, I honestly don't know. All these face masks, those are all new things, so I apologize, I do not know what any of those do yet. That's more, there's like more fun stuff to mess around with, but those you don't need to know at the time. Then face analyzing order, again, this is gonna be when you have multiple people in the image, so it'll analyze from either the left or right, which one it's gonna look at first to try and change, see if that's the person you wanna choose or whatever. Then it's going to choose whether or not it only wants to look at a child, a teen, an adult, or senior. And at that point, if you have like a whole family, then you don't have to worry about it skipping over to a child when you're just trying to show an older person. And the same thing goes for gender. Then you have male and female, and you get to choose. If you have a bunch of people in the shot, it'll only show the males in the reference face here, as long as it gets it correct. Now the face detector model, that's new. You used to not have a choice. I don't know which one works better. So again, test it. This is also new, the face detector size. I don't know how that's going to affect it. I'm assuming if you have people's faces on it that are really tiny, maybe putting it lower would actually do a lot better. I don't know. And face detector score. I have no idea. So real quickly, the main things you just need to know are face swapper, have that turned on, obviously. Face enhancer, if you want the 
thing to actually enhance the faces afterwards. Again, it does take much longer doing that, but you can get some good results from it. Again, on Mac, make sure you have Core ML selected. On PC Linux, your, I believe CUDA will show there instead, and you want that. Thread count and queue count, that's up to you to find out what works best for you. I told you kind of what my setting is. Nothing else for the most part really matters on this side. I would just stay with what the defaults are. And same with over here, unless you need to sp pick a specific frame. You know, how to, you know how to go through the previews. That's about it. And then the reference face, choose which one you want. And change the distance if you need to. Otherwise, everything is just kind of messing around with it, figuring out what might work best for you. And that's really it at that point. I'm going to hit start and see what happens. It will take just a little bit of time. I am actually going to see what I did with my terminal. So as soon as you hit start, you can see the terminal starts going. You can see how, wow, that's going really fast. That, yeah, that was it. At that point, you can either watch it see Keanu in action there then you either watch it there or the next thing you do is just hit this little button in the corner and then it is downloaded to your computer should be in your downloads folder let's put this here on my desktop so you can see it and just hit that and there's the full size version of it and really the only thing after that is if you want to do another video you just Make sure you don't try to drag and drop on here yet. Make sure you hit the little X here to get rid of the target. And then the same thing with the source. Get rid of that. And then you are clear to bring in another video and another image. And that's it. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Um, if you wouldn't mind, I would absolutely appreciate it if you would like, subscribe, and maybe even leave a comment. And I hope you have a great day. Take care.